Sometime between 2656 to 2667, the paradigm of the Terran Kilrathi War would change sharply with the introduction of phase shields on board the capital ships of both the Terran Confederation and Kilrathi Empire. Unlike regular shields, which could only sustain a certain threshold of damage before collapsing, phase shields were practically invincible to standard gunfire from turrets or strike craft. The only method of penetrating this new defensive technology lay in the usage of specialized torpedoes that could match the frequency of a target's phase shields, allowing them to pass through and hit their targets. However, the strike craft of both sides in the pre-2656 era were presumably deemed inadequate for anti-capital ship strikes of this type. Terran and Kilrathi engineers began developing dedicated bombers that could carry, and deliver, anti-cap ship torpedoes to their intended targets. The Kilrathi would develop the Gothry bomber, whereas Confed's answer would be the A-17 broadsword. By the time of 2667, the A-17D variant of the broadsword was widely in use by Confed space forces. Starting with her technical specifications, the broadsword had a maximum velocity of 320 kilometers per second, and a maximum yaw, pitch, and roll of 5 degrees per second. Compounding this poor maneuverability were the lack of afterburners, a standard technology that was outfitted to both Terran and Kilrathi fighter craft of this time. This made the broadsword quite slow. But there was one thing that she had that most other Confed, and even Kilrathi fighters did not a jump drive. This allowed for a broadsword wing to jump into the next system, hit their targets, and, hopefully, be able to jump back without endangering their home carrier or fleet. To help the broadsword survive their engagements, they had some of the thickest armor plating in the fleet, rated at 15 centimeters thickness for front and aft, and 13 centimeters for the sides, with her shields at 18 centimeters armor equivalent strength for all sides. She was, in essence, a flying tank. And much like a tank, she was outfitted with some of the heaviest guns available. Her forward-facing weaponry consisted of three mass drivers on the underside of the fuselage near the cockpit. While given her size and lack of maneuverability, a fighter would normally be able to simply dodge a broadsword's cannons, which is why she was outfitted with three turrets, each armed with dual neutron guns on the underside of the port and starboard wings, as well as the rear of the ship. This rear turret was also armed with a tractor beam to aid in search and recovery operations. However, let us not forget that the broadsword is a bomber, and was listed to have four Pilum friend or foe missiles, and four phase shield penetrating torpedoes. When talking of her service history, she is perhaps best well known for her operations aboard Admiral Jeffrey Tolwyn's flagship, the TCS Concordia who spearheaded the Enigma Sector campaign that ended with the destruction of the Kilrathi military headquarters of Kitithrak Mang. The broadsword was also present during key battles afterwards, such as participating in the Battle of Vukar Tog, the Bloody Battle of Sirius, and the final stand that was the Battle of Earth. By 2669, after the disastrous False Armistice incident, the frontline Confed fighter and bomber fleet was entirely replaced with newer, more advanced strike craft the broadsword being no exception, as the new Longbow-class bomber would fulfill her role in anti-capital ship operations. From there, the broadswords would be sold off to the Free Republic of Landreich and the Union of Border Worlds, while others were consigned to rear-line duty. After the Kilrathi War, the broadswords would see prominent service with the Landreich Navy during the Third Battle of Hellhole, and with the Union of Border Worlds during the Black Lance Incident. With the universe seemingly beginning to settle down after over half a century of conflict, the venerable war horse appeared to be destined for the bone yards and backwater fleets of the Terran worlds. That was until the Nephilim War. For unspecified reasons, most likely a desperate need for flying craft due to sustained losses, the broadswords were brought back to defend the Confederation against their new enemies. She was even known to have even outperformed her modern equivalents, the Shrike and Devastator bombers, by landing the killing blows against the Nephilim construction reef while the Shrikes and Devastators suffered terrible losses. When that war ended, Confed and the pilots of the galaxy began looking at the broadsword with more respect. By 2701, three variants, the Executioner, the War Pig, and the Behemoth, were regular fixtures in the conflict-ridden Antares quadrant. Designed to fill a need in Confed's warfighting capability, the broadsword excelled in the missions she was given, so much so that her legacy of service spanned decades through two major wars and countless military conflicts. 
The broadsword didn't just win wars, but also the hearts and imaginations of those who knew her.